The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you by Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union, funding dreams for over 50 years. <laughs> and a new Irish record for Phil Healy, 22.99. Christy Cooney hands over the Sam Maguire Cup to Graham Canty, Cork All-Ireland Champions for the seventh time ever. Hello and welcome to the Star Sport Podcast. My name is Dylan Mangan of the Southern Star and what a weekend of West Cork sport we have to review. As Castlehaven and O'Donovan Ross's ladies footballers were crowned county championship, camp, county champions. Sorry, Kieran, I'm falling all over the place today. It was the third time lucky as well for Haven's men's seniors team who are into a premier senior football championship final after overcoming the Bears. We have an all West Cork Senior A final to look forward to after Donnie's and Newcestown won their semi finals. Newcestown on their way to a potential Senior A double there. There's Bantry Blues back in Premier Intermediate Football Championship final. And Jack Crowley lit up Paris yet again. So, Kieran, you must be struggling to find space in this week's Star for Everything. But just before we get into things, I just need a quick message from our sponsors as the Star Sport Podcast is brought to you in association with our friends at Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union, where your bank really does matter. Choose Credit Union, choose local, and choose community. So, Kieran, like I said there, it was a huge weekend of West Cork sport, and I guess we'll start with the big one, which was Castlehaven's victory over the Bears, because they went into this game as slight underdogs, but they got off to the perfect start with a goal after just 20 seconds. Yeah, it was it last week's podcast, the week before, Dylan? Or, no, I think the week before, where I butchered the word quadrilogy, but I've been practising it ever since to make sure I get it right, because this was the quadrilogy. It was the fourth meeting of Castlehaven and Bears in the Premier Senior Football Championship in a row. So from 2020 up to 2023, these two teams have met every year, and there's been little to choose between the teams but I have to say that the Haven were by far the better team on Sunday. And I, to be honest, I didn't think I'd be saying it to that extent. The hope was that Castle Haven would get past the Bears into the county final. But Bears were favoured for a reason. So Haven were going in as underdogs, but they didn't play like that on the day. Terrific, terrific performance. Like you said, that early goal by Jack Cahillan really gave Castle Haven the platform. And, and they just took control of the game. And I was um, listening to James McCarthy after the Castle Haven manager. And he was saying that they bossed, I think he said, 80% of the game, whereas the Bears had the better of them for 20%. But still look at the final scoreline. It was a uh, 116-211, to and it was just near the end. There was only a point between them when the Bears came in, came really strong. So Haven still had the battle to get over the line. But what we've seen from this Castle Haven team is progression all the way through the championship. From that first even out against Carby Rangers and Clannacilty, and they were held to a draw to the game against Fellies. Then they put up a big score when they beat Clan. Then they were really impressive in the first half of the quarterfinal against Bell and Colleague. Then against the Bears the last day, their biggest test yet. Probably played well for 45, 50 minutes there. So that's exactly where they want to be. They're on an upward trend at the right time of the season. Um, touch wood, all, all, all the big guns, they're all there. They're all fit. They're all playing well. Michael Hurley got seven points the last day. Brian Hurley got five points. Like I said, Jack Cahillan, Jack Cahillan got that, that early goal. Mark Collins, David Cahillan, Connor Cahillan. These are all fellas who've been there, done it, and, and they're all starting to, to pour at the right time of the season. So, yeah, it's a really, really good and positive result for Castlehaven. Yeah, and if you look into the stats there, Matthew Hurley, obviously friend of the podcast, the Gaelic Statsman on Twitter, put up just some stats from the game. And, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, Castlehaven's conversion rate was incredible in this game this um 82 percent compared to that's from play 82 percent from play compared to fin bears 42 percent so they were clinical at the right time and i like you're saying there it, it is it does feel like it's growing into something something now ahead of the final as well yeah in terms of southern star in michael o'sullivan's inside track column he's talking about the 
the levels of aggression and organization by Castlehaven, how much he was impressed with them. And he, he touches on that too, how Castlehaven are they're finding form at the right moment. You talk about that clinical edge. Like I said earlier, Michael Hurley, seven points, Brian Hurley, five points, Jack Callan, one, one, Mark Collins, Roy McGuire, Cahill McGuire, they're all in, on target too. And when you get to, to this stage of the championship, you need those big players playing well. And Haven have that at the moment. And they have those big players taking their chances. Like Michael Hurley to get seven points. Noel Horgan, who was our reporter there on, on Sunday, gives uh, gives Mike our Man of the Match award. Like he was that influential. So Castlehaven have those big players. They have the threat. They have the forwards to win most games. But they're going to come up against Nemo Rangers in the in the county final, Nemo are the defending champions. And if any team knows how to win a county final, it's Nemo Rangers. Is it 23 county titles they've won already? Maybe I can stand to be corrected on that, but it's something absurd like that. They rarely lose a county final. So while Haven just beat the Bears, who are fancied by so many, they're now facing like the serial winners, the team that was always built to play finals and, and knows how to win finals. So... They've passed their toughest test so far, but they face a huge challenge against this Nemo team. Yeah, only time will tell there as well. We'll have a lot of build-up to that game in the Southern Star in the coming weeks. But I guess we'll need to move on, Kieran, because like I said, there is a lot to cover, especially West Cork teams making their way into county finals. And we have an all-West Cork final in the Senior A Football Championship, it will be Donnie's against Town, And both teams there with brilliant results in their respective semi-finals as well. Yeah, really impressive. So that this All-West Cork County final is on Sunday, November 5th. So it's a bit away at the moment, but that will allow, allow it to build up quite nicely. So what we're guaranteed now, Dylan, is we know that a county title is coming back to West Cork. We don't know where it's going to reside this winter. Is it going to be in Town? Is it going to be in Dunmanway? We'll find out in the, the first Sunday of, of November. Looking at it here, um, Donnie's are really impressive when they beat Knock Degree. 119 to 212. And that's I think Knock Degree got a late goal in that game as well. And what we've seen with Donnie's over the last couple of years, they were semi finalists in 2021. They were quarter finalists last year. Now they're into the final. So they've been there or thereabouts the last couple of years. And they've taken the next step and they've done it really impressively. Like their second half performance the last day was, was top class. It was really, really good. And they're they're another team that, that's building nicely. Their full forward line got 113 between them. Um, they're not the tallest full forward line, but they're the they're lethal. Um Sean Hurley got eight points, Mark Buckley got one, two, and Keith White got three points. And in that Colin O'Shea got six points, including five frees. You can see that there is scoring power in this Donnie's team. And it's important to, to know too that Donnie's went straight into the quarterfinals. They won all their group games. So they bypassed the quarters and they went into the, the semis. So they, they had that extra bit of time off. And I suppose like Donnie's manager, Declan O'Dwyer would have been wondering, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Because what we've seen before is sometimes a team that's had a break, um, like Donnie's had three or four weeks, is it hard to get going again? But no, not Donnie's. What what we saw the la- what we saw the last day. Um, it was not going to be. They got off to a really good start. They got a goal after only two minutes, and then um, I think they were one three to one point up after the first ten minutes. But Donnie's Donnie settled. Donnie's didn't. They weren't rattled too much. They ground their way back into the game. They got it back to just a point behind by at half time one seven to nine, and then Donnie's just opened their shoulders in the second half and, and we just saw how good this team can be. So that was Donnie's getting into their, their um getting into the county final and then Newsest Town. My God, this club, but it's too proud of this at this stage. It's brilliant like they're yeah so just for those those living under a rock in West Cork at the moment who don't realise what's happening is that Newsest Town have now qualified for the county senior A finals in both hurling and football, which is an Incredible achievement for a rural club. Um, but like I've written in the stand the last couple of weeks, um, please never change Deuces Town because what you're doing is just incredible. Um, this group of players to do what, what they've done, it just given how tough it's been, I think they've been they've been in action 12 of the last 13 weekends, something crazy like that between the two codes, yet they're still winning week after week. So Newcastle Town got the better of Newmarket last weekend. This was a, a tight game, as expected. 
Newcastle won 12 points to 10. Uh, David Buckley kicked five points. Ty Toomey kicked three points. And we'll just touch on Ty for a second because Newcastle Town put up a tweet just after the game. Ty played his 150th championship game for Newcastle Town between hurling and football. That's incredible longevity. His first football game was an intermediate game against Carrigaline back in 2001. And his first hurling championship game was against Belly Hay in 2004. But go from 2001 to now, that's what's that, 23 seasons he's been championship football for Newcastle Town. Um, and the Newcastle Town boys have a couple of busy weeks ahead, just like Tyg. And part of his schedule, hopefully Touchwood, will be the Star Sport podcast. So any listeners this week, tune in for next week's Star Sport podcast when we hope to have a, have a chat with Tyg, reflecting on his incredible career to date and a really busy weekend, or a really busy period for Newcastle Town coming up. They will be in action in the Senior A Hurling Final on October 22nd against the winner of the Bride Rovers Blarney replay this Saturday. And then on November 5th, they will have Donnie's. So all go for Newcastle Town, but what a way to have it. Absolutely. And potentially as well, the fact that that Bride Rovers Blarney game um, has to be replayed, that might. Um, there might be injuries coming out of that. There might be a bit more fatigue for their opponents in the final. So that could help them as well, hopefully on their way to a double. Well, we can't say hopefully on the way to a double, obviously, because Donnies are in the football final there as well. So we'll be happy either way in Star Sport headquarters with the results of that final. Elsewhere, look here in, in the Premier Intermediate, Bantry Blues are back into a final after losing narrowly last year and they overcame a really good side in Kilshanning as well. Yeah, I was looking at the, the odds last week before um, before these games and Kilimatch were favourites for the championship. Kilshanning were second, then was Bantry Blues and Castletown Bear. So from that alone, we can take that Kilshanning were favourites to beat Bantry Blues. This is always going to be a very tight game. Um, Kin- Kilshanning were intermediate A champions last year, so they'd momentum behind them. Really good team. But Bentry passed this test, albeit by just a point, 112 to 111. A huge boost for Bentry. They had Rory Dean back in action. And Rory really is their talisman. And he announced he's come back in style. He kicked 1 3 the last day, 1 3 out of their 112. And um, what it means is Bentry are back in a second consecutive Premier Intermediate football final. They lost it last year. They'll be very eager to atone for that year, for that loss to Cantork and go one step further this year. But it tells you what you need to know about this Bantry team, that they dusted themselves down after losing last, last year's county final and they are back in the county final again. Um, not every team can do that. So there's something about this Bantry group and David O'Donovan has a really good team there. Whether they can take the next step now, we'll find out on October 29th. And Bantry's, Bantry's game against Kilnamartra is the, the curtain raiser, you could say, for the Castlehaven and Nemo Rangers game. So that's going to be a a festival or feast of football on October 29th in Parky Cueve. Bantry's game was in at one o'clock in the Haven. Nemo is at is at, at 3 p.m. Again, looking through the, the kind of match report here, like I said, Rory Dean got one three. Arthur Coakley kicked five points, including three from play. Um Sean O'Leary was, was prominent again. There's a lot to like about this this Bantry team. Um the the likes of you've Owen Minahan, Shane Keevers, Marco, Marco O'Sullivan. Um, you know, there's it, it's a good team. And they have the experience of, of losing last year's county final. And I'm always interested in, in the psychology of a team, Dylan. How much do you lean on that disappointment? And how much do you use that hurt coming into uh, a, a, like another county final? Like, do you try and park it, not to revisit it? Or do you use it to kind of, kind of stoke the fires? But... What what Bentry do know now is they do know what it's like to build up their county football final. They experienced it last year. The buzz, the buzz in Bentry. There'll be buzz in the town. But the players who were involved last year will know all about that. They'll know about county final day, how it works, you know, kind of every little step because they were there last year. And you'd hope that experience will tell. Kilimartra, though, are really good. Like John Evans has this team pouring. They did very well against Ivlera in the quarterfinal to come back and win that. They won, um, I don't know how you described the game against Castletown Bear last weekend. There was five players dismissed, including four red cards. But chatting to people who were there, it wasn't a dirty game. It wasn't an, an ill-tempered game. And I see John Evans himself was, was saying that afterwards. 
But Killam Archer are a really good team as well. So Bentry will go in as underdogs. Maybe that's that's just where they want to be, waiting in the long grass to cause a surprise. And so what we do know is that there will be a county title coming down to either Muskery or Carberry on the 29th. We just don't know who's going to be carrying that, that trophy just yet. One thing for certain is on the 29th that Parky Cueve will be blue with all the fans there. So hopefully lots of people travelling up from West Cork for that game, for both those games on the 29th. Uh, elsewhere, Kieran, just a word as well. Um, You mentioned Castletown Bears' loss in Bantry that game was, um, but unfortunately none of the Bear teams could make their way into their their finals, Adjigal and Erhan also losing out as well. Yeah, um, kind of a disappointing weekend for the three Bear clubs in their county semi-finals, but I think all three will reflect after time just on the season and see it as one of progress. And the key for them all now is to try and build in it. Castletown Bear qualified out of the group stages in the Premier Intermediate for the first time since these, this competition was re- revamped four years ago. So that alone is progress. They won all their group games. They got the county semi-final. There's something there to build on. Um, Adrigol got the county quarterfinal last year. They got the semi-final this year. Only lost out after extra t- extra time to Mitchellstown. You know, they lost by two points in the end. And they showed great spirit in that game again to come back in normal time to force extra time. But again, they improved this year and what we saw last year. So there's a good foundation there. And I was talking to their, to our manager, Tim Sullivan, in a recent star edition. And he was on about the young fellas coming through. And David Harrington, one of their, I suppose their star forward, made the same point in last week's star as well. So and you've got to have a base there that they can build on. And then you've Orhan. The last couple of years, Orhan have now got, got to the county, the, the county semi-finals. But this was the first year of the new Premier Junior Football Championship. So Orhan at last have a schedule of championship games because for the last for the previous few years, Orhan are the only junior A team coming from Beira. So they were effectively Beira Junior A champions that are kicking the ball. So they had no, they weren't road tested. They weren't battle hardened before they left their division. Whereas now they're getting group games in the new Premier Championship. They did really well this year to get to the to the county semi-final. So Orhan will be determined to, to go one step further next year. And, and, and they have the players there and they're gaining the experience. So, okay, a disappointing weekend for the Bearer clubs, but there is green shoots of hope there for, for all three. Absolutely. And moving on, um, we don't have time, Kieran, this week to talk about Jack Crowley. That's how packed a weekend it was. So we'll move on to ladies football and O'Donovan Rossa and Castlehaven both brought County titles home at the weekend. We'll be hearing from Lisa Hart, who's captain of that Skib team. But maybe first, just a few words on a Castle Haven team for whom sky, the sky is the limit. They just keep going. Yeah, it's an incredible story. Um, we would Maureen O'Driscoll on last week's podcast just chatting about this Castle Haven journey up until last Saturday. They'd won four county titles in a row. So from Junior C in 2019, Junior B 2020, Junior A 21, Intermediate 22. So for the first year ever they're, this season, they're up as a senior club. They um, like That is a huge step up in standard. And they know that themselves. You're up against the Moran Abbeys, the Aero Oaks, like these teams who are the, the best teams in the county. But a realistic goal for Castle Avon or Target was the Senior B Championship. So for them to get to the Senior B final in their first year and to beat Clan of Kilty in the semi-final and then to go one step further and to beat Fermoy in the final who are the defending Senior B champions tells you all you need to know about this Castlehaven team. Like they, they, they just have it. They just they just know how to win at this stage. And they get um, 4-5 to one thirteen. So that all adage goals win games certainly did for, for Castlehaven. Moreto Driscoll, who was on the podcast, scored 2-1. So just for any... Local sports people listening out there, it's good look to come on the podcast. So when you get that call or, or text from the Star Sports Department, you should say, Jesus, I'm definitely going to have a chat with those lads because the odds are that good things will follow. Like I was just on Jack Crowley, I was only chatting to him at the West Cork Sports Star Awards a couple of weeks ago. Um, just while they were on Ireland training camp, he popped down to the Celtic Ross to accept his, his award. And I'm not saying the star was good look, but with an interview with Jack in the Southern Star, and now he's 
he's what he's looking forward to the All Blacks on on Saturday night. He's um he's sending a sumptuous cross field kick for Gary Ringrose to to score a try in in the stead of France. We won't trace it all back to the Southern Star Dillon, but I think we can take a small bit of credit somewhere, you know, just to just just to pick up our sports department. But um, but just uh, just back to Castlehaven, yeah, incredible, incredible success. That's five county titles in a row. And it's another stepping stone to what they want to become, which is a force in in senior football. So now they have that senior B title. They'll take confidence from that. And their next step now is to try and make an impression in the senior championship proper, you could call it, with the the senior A championship against the likes of the Mornebi. Yeah, it's incredible. Their journey over the last uh, few years has just been brilliant to watch. and, And hopefully there'll be more of that from them. Now, like I mentioned there, we'll be hearing from Lisa Hart, who captained O'Donovan Rasa to a Junior A final victory over Donnie's. It was 4-10 to 2-5 there on Saturday. And Kieran, again, just great news for, for Skibbereen. Yeah, brilliant. And it's great, great for this group, especially they lost last year's county county final. Um, so to come back a year on from losing to David Vaughan and put in a performance like they did. And to win by double scores against a very good Donnie's team. Um, again, it's just a great indication of, of, of what Skip have at the moment and what James O'Donovan, the Rasa manager, what he's instilled in, in this team. Donnie's will be bitterly disappointed. They didn't score till the 29th minute. Uh, and by then, Skip were, were up and running. The Rasas were they were rampant, you know. They um they were leading one three to no score after well, less less than 50, 15 minutes on the clock. It was 3-4 to no score before Donnie's got on the scoreboard. So Skib really had, I'm not going to say they'd one hand in the cup, but they'd, um, they'd almost the fingertips about to touch the cup when you build up a 13-point lead in the first half of a of a county final. Young Ava Donovan had another great game. She got 1-4. One, one Laura O'Mahony, who was a Cork senior, she kicked 1-1. One, one. Um, when, you, when you have big players like that for the... Like the Christine Fitzgerald in gold, who's been around for, for for a good few years, you know, for players like that to win this this county title, it's it's huge for them. And what it's done now as well, Dylan, it's opened the door into the Munster series, and um, Skibber in action this weekend. They're taking on the Tipperary uh, champions. I think that's away from home, so the adventure continues. So not much time for celebrations, even though no doubt the the Skib women celebrated well last 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 weekend, and and so and so they should. And now it's the it's the bonus of a of a monster series and hopefully a, a monster run. Brilliant, a brilliant win for the Skib team and just great as well for for West Cork ladies football that we have Skib and Haven bringing county titles back. With Tyke McCormick going well as two, they've got into county final. They're going to be taking on Rock Bond on I think it's October twenty first, which is the weekend after next. And we still have a couple of more West Cork teams in county semi-finals at the lower grades or over the weeks ahead. So it's just great for 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 ladies football in West Cork that we're that we're having such success. Yeah, lots to look forward to. And let's hear now from Lisa Hart, who caught up with Sean Holland earlier this week. The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you by Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union, funding dreams for over 50 years. Now, I'm delighted to be joined by Lisa Hart, captain of the O'Donovan Rossa Junior Footballers, who beat Donnie's on the weekend. Lisa, how are you? Great, thank you, yeah. And uh, are the celebrations still going down in Skibbereen, or have things subdued somewhat? Um, they subdued somewhat, all right, but we had a great weekend now, um, Saturday and Sunday, but um, that's the end of it now, because we're out again next weekend, so... Yeah, you're back into action in the Munster. And what are the thoughts heading into that? Um, I suppose our sole focus um, before this weekend was just the county final. We hadn't even spoke about any more Munster Championship um, in training. Uh, we were just solely focused on Saturday and um, getting over that challenge. But we're out now again on Saturday. Um, we are travelling up to Tipperary um, to play um the Tipperary team up there in North Tip. So um, we'll be training again now Wednesday night and we'll refocus and regroup again now on Wednesday. Fair play, team, fair play. And I suppose just going back to the game on Saturday, 
Um, you got a brilliant start. Were you expecting to keep Donny scoreless for pretty much all of the first half? It wasn't until the 29th minute they got their first score. That's a great credit to the defence. Was that something you'd practice or was it just a bit of luck on the day? Um, it was definitely something we had practiced all right. Um, look, we know Donnie's, um, they have a big threat. They have um, got a lot of goals over the championship season. So uh, we really focused on our uh, defence and defending in numbers and um, tracking back together. And I think it really showed on um, Saturday. In fairness to all the backs, like keeping them scoreless. We would never expect to keep them scoreless for that long. But we were delighted. And I suppose... Our early goals as well really gave us um, the momentum to keep pushing on and that definitely gave us an advantage going into the second half. Mm -hmm. And uh, a big reason for your win, uh, I suppose, was the motivation that the year previously you'd lost the county final. So was that a motivating factor going into the game on Saturday? Um, yeah, definitely. I suppose like we know the hurt and what it's like to be like on days like that when you lose. And I think um, we definitely use that to drive us on on Saturday and people just really wanted it this year and Previously in the year, we had lost um, the West Cork final to Donnie's down in Union Hall, and we didn't have a great day that day. Uh, so we definitely wanted to right our wrongs from that day. And thank God now on Saturday, it all came together. Mm -hmm. no, yeah, right. And just on your on your own um, side of things, then, Lisa, you were part of the West Cork team that won the senior in 2020. How would you compare winning the county title now with your own club compared to when you won it with West Cork? Um, I suppose getting to play senior football it was a great opportunity, but there's nothing like winning with your club. Um, we played uh, with these girls all growing up. The club was founded in 2010 and um, myself and um, a few more others on the team have been playing since the club was founded in 2010. So, do you know, from starting out, um, working up the grades and to get an into to be an intermediate team now next year like is just um great for the club and just so proud of all the girls. Mm -hmm. And kind of tell us a small bit about the age profile of the team. Is it a young team? Is it an old team? Uh, what kind of makes up the 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 reasons for success in Odell and Rasa ladies football? Um, I suppose it's a relatively young team, but um, we have a few older girls on the team as well, and. I think those leaders really um, stepped up and in training and stuff, everyone's like encouraged all the younger girls um, come and they bring a great, uh, um, a different aspect to the training then as well. And we're all learning from each other. Definitely um, having the older girls on the team as well, like provides a lot of leadership for the younger girls. Mm -hmm. well, that's fantastic. And probably one of the main ones is Laura, Laura O'Mani and, what would she? What does she make uh, mean to the team? You know, obviously she's had great success with Cork as well, and she had a fantastic game as well on Saturday. So how influential is she? Oh, she's very influential. We didn't have um, her for the league campaign, and she was a great asset coming into our championship. And um, we had uh, other Cork under sixteen girls back as well um, from the after playing their Cork campaign, and they were great assets too. And I think. And uh, that really drove us on for the championship as well. Uh, it took us a while to get back into the flow of things when the girls were coming back into the team, but definitely for championship, everything came together. And um, Laura is such a good leader on the pitch and she has so much experience from playing with the West Cork team and um, playing with County all up along. Um, she definitely all drives us on. And finally, just as you touched on at the start, the thoughts now heading into the Munster competition. Is it something you'll take game by game and just see how it goes? Um, I think definitely we would like more success, but um, we only have to focus now on next Saturday and get over that and hopefully we'll have success with this campaign as well. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And just looking forward to next year, I know you have your new year neighbours, Castlehaven, have gone through the ranks, you know, going all the way up now and winning senior county titles. Is that a hope that he can emulate that success? Um, definitely. Uh, it's a great opportunity to get to play intermediate football next year and uh, we'll definitely be looking forward to the challenge and hopefully we'll be um, in another county final next year. I wish you all the best with that anyway. Lisa, listen, thanks very much for that. Thanks a million. Now, Kieran, if the Star Sport podcast has been busy this week, then that means that the Star Sport pages will be busy on Thursday. And I mentioned it at the start of the podcast that you're probably finding it hard to fit everything in 
this week. So let, let us know how you're getting on and what will be in this week's Southern Star. I've gone a bit greyer this week, you know, but it, it's a good grey. It's always good to go grey and to age a small bit when it's a good week for West Cork Sport, which it was. So my headache was, OK, how the hell am I going to fit this all into the into the one sport section? But we get it done as, as we always do. So obviously football fever has swept West Cork following the weekend. So for for fans of the Castlehaven ladies and they were done it for Russell ladies, we've full reports and reaction and pictures from their county final wins and of course we've loads of coverage of the county semi-finals as well so Haven, Bantry, Dawley's, Newcestown there's loads for their supporters and he, indeed the players and the clubs themselves to sink their teeth into um, so we have the county well covered also the touch on the Carberry Junior A hurling final is on this weekend it's against it's between St James's and Clannacilty and this is going to be a cracking game because St James's are in their first county final and I'm here now trying to find the I think it's in Newcestown on Sunday and I'm just trying to get the details here as I'm, I'm chatting away so um, last weekend in the semi-finals what we saw is um, the St James's had an absolutely brilliant result they beat Kilbury 119 to 19 to qualify for their first ever Carby Junior A hurling final. And it goes to say it didn't. They did never won this title before. So there'll be fierce excitement out around Artfield, Rat Barry. So, like I said, yeah, that final, St. James's Clan of Kilty, 3 30 pm on Sunday in Newcestown. And Clan of Kilty dethroned the three in a row chase in Badnescarty in the other semi final, 3 20 to 2 22. After extra time, absolute epic. So we've full coverage of those those semi-finals in Thursday Star. Sean Holland is also looking forward to the start to the Munster Junior Hurling League with um, the East Division One preview. He's talked to Bend and Skib and Clan and Kilty. Um Jack Watch this week is really good. Sean Holland has done a superb job. We have about Jack Crowley, the Valley's footballer who got away. So Sean Holland was talking to Valley Rovers about Jack Crowley as an underage footballer with the club and what he was like. So that's well worth checking out. We have the usual road boarding, motorsport, soccer. It's all in there. It's packed. Absolutely packed as always. All that will be in the star this Thursday. Available in shops across West Cork or if you're further afield and can't make it to the shops, you can subscribe to the Southern Star and get it on your laptop, tablet or phone. So just head to subscribe.southernstar.ie Enter your details and you're getting exact replica of the newspaper for less than two euro per week, along with full access to our website as well. As always, thanks for listening to the Star Sport podcast. And thanks again to our sponsors at Access Credit Union. If you enjoyed this, please remember to rate, review and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And we'll be back again next week. Thanks for listening.